for this year and the beginning of this year. We pray that uh, the word will have free course, <clears throat> that hearts will be touched, that uh, agreement will be made, uh, that it would uh, uh, people will touch and agree with this word this morning, Lord, and they'll be prepared and be ready for what you're doing in the church, what you're doing in the earth. And uh, we'll give you the praise and the glory. We'll give you the honor. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. Let me get back here. I'm trying to start my uh, thing. In this. Praise God. I'm trying to get my YouTube page, my, my um, iPad going here. Something's, something's not working right. How did I get over here? I don't know what I do. It's locked on me. Whoop, 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 whoop. I can't get my podcast thing going. Oops. Well, well, thank you anyway. Anyway. I'm going to be ministering today on, 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 on the word of the Lord. This, I'm, I'm, the Lord has confirmed this several times. And uh, through several, I've been listening to other, other, uh, other ministers ministered his word similar to this, but this is what the Lord gave me, and I, and I, I know what it is. And I've been writing, I got uh, one, two, three different pages of notes of just news flashes from heaven. You know, it's just, it's everywhere. I mean, it's just like reading a newspaper. You got stuff, but so much stuff going on right now. It is, it is just, just, just interesting. But uh, this, this word here is what the Lord is speaking even right now to the church. Just, I want you to get excited because it says, make haste. God is changing your pace. You're not going to sit locked down anymore. You're not going to be sit bound up you got to get ready and prepared to move out with God and it's going to be haste and I want to talk about haste and the word haste means to be liquid to flow easy you know when you're liquid you can pour liquid in any container and it'll shape to that container and so God said I want you to be liquid because when I move you'll be able to flow with me you'll be able to it'll be easy it'll be us it'll be the word haste means to do something suddenly it means to promptly get it done. Do it. When the Lord said do it, you, you, you promptly get it done straightway, suddenly. Just do it. Uh, the scripture, I'm going to start off with Genesis 19.22. We know the story. He, he, said, he told him, he said, he told Lot and his family, and the angel told him, he said, make haste. Be liquid. Get out of here. Escape hither, for I cannot do anything to you have come hither Therefore, the name of the city was called Zoar. And the, and the scripture said, remember Lot's wife. They had to move out quickly because judgment was coming. And he told her, don't look back. Don't look back. You got to move. Be fluid. Suddenly, it's going to happen. And he said, I can't do anything till you make haste. Till you do what you got to do. The angel can't do anything. You got to do what you got to do. And so God said, I'm, I want you to begin to flow easy. I want you to begin prepare yourself uh, if, if you back up. We're at the starting blocks. God said, get to the starting blocks. You know, when you get ready to run track, you got to get warm up and stretch and, and, and get yourself together. And God said, for the last year or so, I've been stretching you and warming you up. See, you thought it was, uh, uh, he was putting pain on you. No, he was trying to get you limbered up so <laughs> you can take this last dash for the backside of the track because, you know, we come into the final, the final run. So you got to uh, uh, make haste and get in your block and get in position. God said, I want you to get in position now because you're getting ready to take off. You're getting ready to accelerate. Amen? You, 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 when, the, when the racer races, he knows how to move his arms. He's already trained himself on how to step and how to lean back and how to run and how to get to the speed that he needs. So God said, I've been training you. And so you've been trained, and now it's time for you to go in and begin to possess. Hallelujah. It means a supernatural acceleration. 1 Kings 18, 46 uh, uh, says, And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. Now remember God said, told Elijah, Elijah said it ain't going to rain for, for three years. It ain't going to rain. And he hit Elijah. And they couldn't find Elijah. And Elijah sat at the brook for three years. And it was with the widow woman. And, and uh, 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 
he told him, he said, now I want you to, get, I want you to go down, uh, go and, uh, and pray. And Elijah, the Bible says that he was like us. He prayed with earnest. He prayed. He told his servant, go look and see if you see anything. He said, I don't see nothing. I'm in the sky. And he kept praying. Seven times he prayed until a fist formed. And then uh, the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah. And Elijah told Ahab, he said, you better get down because rain is coming. Something's getting ready to come. And it says Elijah, and, and, and the hand of the Lord was on Elijah, and he girded up his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. In the midst of a storm, in the, on top of a mountain, he outran a horse and chariot. Supernatural acceleration hit him. God's hand was on him. Elijah outran a horse. Now, you know that's the anointing. You got to be anointed to outrun a horse. Amen. He was in the supernatural. He was moving down the mountain so fast that he outran Elijah, uh, Ahab in the chariot into the gate of Jezreel. So when God says, I'm getting ready to accelerate you, you're getting ready to move quickly. You got to be fluid. Certain situations are going to come up where you got to move quickly and be fluid in what you're doing and what God wants you to do. In the, in, in, in the time of fluid situations, uh, another example is uh, Genesis 18, Abraham. Was at his tent in a time of angelic visitation. And the Bible says in verse 6, Abraham hastened, when the angel showed up, he hastened to the tent to Sarah. He didn't just, well, somebody's tent, I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. He moved quickly and said, Make ready quickly three measures of fine meal, kneel it, and cakes upon the hearth. And Abraham ran to the herd. He walked. He knew there was a visitation, there was an angel there, that the Lord was there. There was something about to happen, and he had to get in position to receive the blessing or the word that it was coming to him, but he had to prepare something, a sacrifice for the, for the Lord, for the angel of the Lord. And he said, get a, uh, fetch a calf, get a, a tender and good, and give it to a young man, and he hastened to dress it. He said, you, if you ever cut up a, a, a lamb, you're going to cut up a lamb today in five minutes. I want that thing clean, <laughs> ready to go. Get that cake ready. Get that meal ready. He ain't got, we ain't got time to waste because we'll miss what God has for us. And so the angel told him, he said, <coughs> uh, uh, Sarah's going to have a child. And Sarah was in the tent laughing. Who, me? Yeah. yeah. And then the angel told him, he said, I got to go to Sodom and check out what's going on. And Abraham began to negotiate with him. You know, if I find 10, 50, if I find... 10, Lord, if, if I can just find five, you know, uh, you won't destroy it. So he went through that thing. That was a time of instruction for Abraham, and the angel showed up to him. When, 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 when it's time of haste, the bridegroom seeks you. Someone prayed for your obedience. So in this season when things are going to be hastened and you've got to be fluid, you may be dealing with someone that had prayed to God for something that you got to give to them. You were in position to give it to them. In Genesis 24, we know the story of Abraham sent his servant to go find a bride for Isaac. And in verse 24, the servant was sitting there and said, Lord, you know, you didn't send me on this long trip. Let me put a fleece out before you. Let a maid come with a pitcher of water and offer me water and stuff. And he said, oh, God, my master of Abraham, I pray, send me a good speed this day. Show kindness unto my master Abraham. Behold, I I stand here at the well of water and the daughters of the men of the city come out to draw water and let it come to pass that the damsel whom I shall say let down that pitcher I pray thee that I may drink and she shall say drink and I will be I will give that camel's drink also let the sum be she who is appointed for thy servant Isaac therefore shall I know that thou hast showed kindness unto thy master I got to be specific I, I'm supposed to find a wife from I don't know who she is but let me put a fleece on. you pick her out you, if I just won't give you a fleece let her just give me some water and then I ain't going to tell her but let her say I'm going to give your camel some water too and, and, and because of that Rebecca I don't know what she did she must have known something was up because she she didn't even know it was up. She just was in position to give him the water. And her, 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 her training and her heart attitude and her giving attitude, the kindness caused her 
to uh, give him the water, and next thing she knows, she got on jewels. He putting jewels all on her arm, <laughs> putting rings on her finger, and necklaces all over. They said, you the one. He said, my master sent me. That is a type and shadow of Jesus seeking his bride in the Old Testament. That's what the bride is, just said, I'll go with you. I don't even know what my husband looked like, but I'll, I'll, I'll go with you. You, look, all this bling, he got to be looking good. He got to, he got to have something, amen. I'm going with you, amen. So she hastened. So you, can, you can't, uh, you have to hasten in this season when the door opportunity opens. You can't, you can't dilly-dally around. You've got, to, you've got to hasten. And she said, drink, my Lord. And she hastened to let down the water pitcher in her hand and give him a drink and when she had done giving him a drink she said I will draw water for thy camels also until they have done drinking so you can't miss your time of deliverance and, and, and your way out of a famine situation because we're coming out of this thing you're coming out so you can't miss the opportunity for what God wants you positioned to be to, to get your blessing in Genesis 45 verse 9 it says now haste you up and go up to my father and say unto him, Thus saith the son Joseph, God hath made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down unto me and tarry now. I talked about it last week about the story of Joseph. Joseph went through all the testing. They threw him in a pit. They took his cloak, his beautiful coat. Then he went to Potiphar's house. His Potiphar's wife took his clothes. Amen. She had to, he had to run out the door with his drawers on. Amen. She, she just snatched his clothes <laughs> and took his clothes. He went to prison. They took his clothes in prison. And But then at the end, they say, come on up out of the prison. We're going to change your clothes. We're going to put on, on royal garments. Amen. You're about to change your clothes. You're about to change your, your look. You're about to change who you are. Your whole persona is going to change. He said, go, but he said, go, told his brothers, go, don't dilly-dally. Quickly go and get my father. Hasten. Move out. Quickly go get him. And you shall dwell in the land of Goshen, and thou shalt be near me, thou and thy children, and thy children's children. This ain't just for you. It's for the next generations too. You got to move in this situation because we were praying this morning about our children being saved and our grandchildren being saved. So we're coming into a place in this year that you got to be in position for God to begin to bless and move in your family. He said, and thy flocks and your herds and all that you have, everything that you have is about to shift. And they'll be nourished. I said, I will nourish you there. Amen. There ain't going to be no hungry. You ain't going to be hungry. Manuel came this morning and got a cake this morning. That's nourishment. I will nourish you. <laughs> Amen. And there shall be five years of famine. For thou, least thou in thy household, and all that they have come to poverty. So we're, we're in a time. So God wants to bless and get us in position to church, to righteous, but in the same time, there's going to be turmoil, problems, earthquakes, everything going to be blowed up in, this, in, in, in the earth right now, but the church is going to be in position, the believer is going to be in position to be blessed, to be maintained, to be nourished by the Lord, all in your household, amen? We're seeing now that a lot of people are having our home Bible studies now, household Bible studies now. God has locked everything down, and they're, they're finding the Lord. So your new house, your new 40 acres, and the mule are ready. So get in the starting blocks. Amen. Remember when you watch the cowboy movies, uh, the, way, the Way West, and they would say, well, we're having a land, a land grab today. Uh, get in your wagons, get on your horses, and, and you got to go mark your uh, you know, laying out, and you watch the cowboy movies, and everybody, be, wagons be turned over, people be running. Other guys be on the hill shooting you so you can't get the land. <laughs> Everybody's going for the land. But God says, but Joseph told me, he said, you shall tell my father of all my glory in Egypt. While I'm in Egypt, I'm going to be glorified. While you're in trouble, you're going to be glorified. God is not in the stimulus checks. He's in overflow. Amen. The world will give you a stimulus check, but God will give you overflow. Amen. That's why I said come out of that system because you've got to learn how to trust God in this hour to give you all your provision. Amen. Close your little door. Let that little milk, that gallon of milk every day it fill back up. Amen. You ain't even been to the store. You don't even have to go to the store. God's taking care of you. He said, you shall haste and bring down my father. He said, don't 
just take your little time. You go with speed. You go with a purpose. You go uh, with something determined in your heart because you're about to, you, with excitement. That's what it means. It really means, pace means to go with excitement. Hey, something about to happen. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to get, get, get. Uh, God said, I'm getting ready to go overseas. Well, let me get in there and pack my bag. Shoot. And get everything ready. Amen. I need this, this, and this. We're in a season in, in the earth right now that the pharaohs and the, and the uh, uh, herods shall bow the knee after the hardened heart. And you see, God is hardening the hearts of these politicians, these leaders of nations. He's dealing with, and, and we're literally dealing, walking in the book of, uh, 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 of Exodus right now in the spirit. It's just, I, I did a post yesterday. The Lord told me to post it. And, and I said, Lord, you sure you want me to post this? He said, put it up. There. I said, okay. And the Lord said, I'm sending the tip plague. All the corrupt politicians and those and, and mayors and governors, uh, Tim Prague was the firstborn, was taken out of here. There's going to be a lot of wailing and weeping. People don't understand that God, when he, when he starts getting ready to move, he, 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 he's God all by himself. The fear of the Lord is going to hit our governments around the world. There's going to be some fear up in there. Some of them are going to say, I don't want to be a politician no more. I'm, I'm scared. Because folk can be falling. They're already falling even before they get in office. Uh, I wouldn't want to play in that game. Exodus 10, verse 16 says, Pharaoh called Moses and Aaron in haste and said, I've sinned against the Lord your God. So God started sending the plagues, and Pharaoh, in haste, called Moses. Hey, 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 I'm sorry, I sinned against the Lord. Uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Now, now forgive me. I pray thee, uh, my sin uh, only this once, and, and, and entreat the Lord your God that, that he may take away this, uh, me this death only. And he went out from Pharaoh and entreated of the Lord. And the Lord turned the mighty west wind and took away the locusts. See, the locusts had hit the nation. He said, I repent, I repent, I repent. But God said, I'm going to harden his heart again. Yeah, you repented. I'm going to harden your heart again. And some of the stupid stuff we're hearing on these governors and politicians is just absolutely, what? You want to do what? Oh, now you can't say father, mother, son, daughter in, this, in the House of Representatives. You, you can't say gender, you, something wrong, something wrong. But the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go. See, we're getting ready to leave out of here. We're getting ready to get blessed, and they're going to tell you that we want you blessed. The firstborn of the wicked shall be smitten. The Pharaohs, the Herods, the Tetrarchs, Exodus 12, verse 11 says, For thus you shall eat and gird your loins, your shoes on your feet. Put your track shoes on. Get in position. Get your kneading troughs ready. Uh, eat. You shall eat in haste. Amen. Don't be leaving no leftovers. There ain't nothing to leave, no leftovers, nowhere. You about to get up out of here. Amen. And now you got to imagine, you got to imagine now that 400 years of being in bondage, all this bondage, and someone comes and says, we're getting ready to go. Oh, man. God ain't going to deliver. It's been 400 years. We ain't going nowhere. You better get excited. God's about to do something. I can't get excited. Just, just do what I tell you. Just eat the lamb, get your shoes on, and get ready. He said, for I will pass through the land of Egypt this night and smite all the firstborn. And then when they started hollering out here, when they heard all that yelling, they said, we about to get up out of here. I ain't going to look out the window and look out the door and see who died. I'm keeping my door closed. The blood is over that door right now. Amen. Don't even tell me about nobody's funeral because I ain't going to it. Amen. I'm focused on the Lord. Amen. If you, wanna, if you want a job in this hour and in this season, the best job you can get is a grave digger because he's going to be busy. And the blood shall be for you a token on the houses where you are. And when I see the blood, I'm going to pass over you. I said last year, I said, I, I said, did the Lord seal you in your forehead? I hope you got your seal because that death angel is about to come through the earth. And if you ain't sealed in your forehead, amen, it come up through your house. That's why we anointed to everyone. When we get through, when God gets through with what he's about to do in the earth, they're going to urge us to be blessed. They're going <laughs> to urge us to leave. The Bible says when the Egyptians, is at verse uh, 12, 33, that the Egyptians were urgent upon the people that they might send them out of the land in haste. Get out of here now. Here, take this diamond. Take this coat. Take, here, take this mercy. I don't care what you do. Just go, go, go. Just leave. You're free. Amen. I want that uh, China set. You know that China set, Miss? You got in the cabinet? Yeah, yeah, I want that one too. <laughs> I 
Hallelujah. Amen. And the portable stove, I can use that on my trip. Amen. And the people took their dough before it was leavened, and the kneading troughs bound up in their clothes upon their shoulders. And the children of Israel did according to the word of Moses. They borrowed all the Egyptians' jewels of silver and gold and everything else that they had, and clothes, changes of clothes and raiment. And the Lord gave people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. See, God's about to give you favor in the sight of everybody. Amen. They told you, no, you couldn't have that car, but now they're going to give it to you. Amen. Told you, no, you couldn't have that house, or you wouldn't qualify, but now your credit score changed all of a sudden. Uh, all of a sudden, money in your account. You don't even know where the money came from. Your credit score went up to 780. You don't, 780, how did my credit go? Amen. God's going to change you around. Why are you sleeping? God's working. Amen. He's doing it in the background, and so they're going to urge you to be blessed. The unrighteous will get what they have sold. They're getting what they sow. Deuteronomy 32, 35. To me belong a vengeance and recompense. Their foot shall slide in due time, for the day of their calamity is at hand, and the things shall come upon them shall, shall make haste. God said this is about to happen quickly. Amen. I'm about to judge. When God says vengeance is mine, I shall repay. That's what he means. Amen. What you have sowed, that shall you reap. If you sow to unrighteousness, I wouldn't want to be in your shoes right now. I would be repenting real quick. Real quick, because what God is about to slap, when God gets ready to slap, you don't want to be around. He said, the Lord shall judge his people, repent himself for his servants, for when he seeth their power is gone, and there is none shut up or left. He shall say, where are their gods? Their rock on whom they trusted, which did eat fat of their sacrifices and drink the wine of their drink offering. Let them rise up and help you and be your protection. See now that I, even I, am he, and there is no God with me. I kill, I make alive, I wound, I heal, neither is there any can deliver out of my hand. God said, I got control of this whole earth. It is my footstool. There is no other God. If I look to the left, ain't no God. I look to the right, ain't no other God. It's just me. Omnipotent, omnipresent, full of power and authority, and I'm over this earth. Amen. He said, if I want to heal, I heal. If I want to kill, I kill. What you going to do about it? Not a thing. You can't do anything about it. He said, I'll kill you. I'll make you bring you back to life if I want to. <laughs> Hallelujah. Remind me when I was getting a child, when you get a whooping, you're, you're killing me. I'm going to kill you. <laughs> I can't breathe. You don't want God to whoop you. You got to move out in haste. For the prophetic and angelic manifestations that are coming and the instructions that are coming. This, this is a prophetic word, so you got to trust in the prophetic word. Get excited that you're coming out of Egypt. Get excited that your blessings are come. Get excited that favor has come upon you. Get a favor, excited that your bank account is overflowing. Amen. You're not going to be looking at that $10 balance in your checking account anymore. Amen. It's going over and above and beyond. Amen. The banker's going to be coming to you and saying, do you want some money? Can we loan you some money? Can you, borrow, can you loan us some money? Amen? In Judges 13, verse 70, there was a, we know this, the, the story. Uh, 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 Manoah, his wife was, was barren. An angel came to her, and he, and he said, he said, behold, you shall conceive and bear a son. And now he shall dr not drink any wine nor strong drink. Talk about Samson's before he was born. Neither eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite from God and the womb to the day of his death. And Manoah entreated the Lord and said, O Lord, let the man of God which thou sent come again to us and teach us what we shall do unto the child that shall be born. In other words, the, the angel came to his wife and said, you're going to have a child. And he's going to be holy. And then his, she told her husband. Her husband said, wait a minute. We don't know how to raise this child. We better get some instruction. Lord, send an angel back to give me direction on what to do in this hour. And God hearkened to the voice of Manoah. And the angel came again unto the woman. And she sat in the field. But Manoah, her husband, was not with her. And the woman made, she got up. Oh, pew. I gotta go get my husband now. Let me let me let me move while the angels show up. I can't mess around. I gotta get we gotta get this instruction. So she went and, and ran and got her husband and said, Behold, the man that appeared to me that come unto me the other day is here. 
So when, in this season, you got to make haste. You don't know when the angel's going to show up. You don't even know what you're talking to an angel sometimes. You just got to be ready because sometimes these angels come, they come looking like you and me. You and me. I've seen them. They're, they're just regular person. But you got to be discerning that, that, that this is an angel. Amen. I've seen angels uh, uh, several times on, on some of my trips when I've traveled overseas. I, I was, uh, the last trip I went to Nigeria, and uh, uh, I came in, and I had a bag, three bags. I had a shoulder bag. I had a big bag. I had another bag, and I'm, and I'm carrying the bags. And then I had the papers in. I had to fill out papers and stuff. And I came up to the window, and, uh, and she said, you got to fill this paper out. He said, you got to fill out this paper. He said, uh, go take your bags and check them in. I'll fill your paperwork out. Now, that's, this is a guy that, you know, he said, I'll fill your paperwork. You go check your bags in. And they took me on and checked my bags in. I came back to the man that my papers filled out. And it was an angel. You know, I'll just take care of you. They, they, they. And, then, and then when I went to the next one, the other guy just smiled at me. He said, I know who you are. You, you never know when you're entertaining angels. He said it to me, you, you should conceive. So they made haste. Encounters will come that will change your destiny are, are ahead of you. Don't look for your daddy's asses. Amen? Don't look back. Don't look like, back like Lot. Don't look back, oh, God did it that, uh, this, this way last time. He did it that way. Uh, not, maybe he's going to do the same thing. No, he's doing a new thing, a whole new thing. We know the story of Samuel. Uh, 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 Saul was sent by his father, his father's asses that got away, and he sent him to find the asses, and he was with his servant, and they, and they, and they came to the, to, to the city, and they said, is there a prophet in the land? And they were looking for the prophet Samuel because they couldn't find the donkeys. And, uh, and verse, verse uh, 11 of, of 1 Samuel 9 says, and as they went up the hill to the city, they found young maidens drawing out water and said to them, is there a seer here? There's, they, they came across the young maidens, this type and shadow of, the, of, the, of, of the, the five with oil and the five not with oil. They were at the well, the well of salvation. Is there a seer here? And they answered and said, he is, behold, he is before you. Make haste now. You came right at the right time. You got to make haste now. You got you to move quickly. Uh, for he came to the city today, and there's a sacrifice of the people today at the high place. As soon as you come to the city, you shall straightway find him before he go up to the high place to eat. For the people will, be, will not eat until he come, because he doth bless the sacrifice. And afterwards, they eat and are bidden. Now, therefore, get up now, for about this time you shall find him. They knew, the, they knew, they knew Samuel's pattern where he would be and what we would do and they gave him specific instructions and when he found Samuel he wound up being anointed by God to be the king he walked right into destiny he was changed into a new man he was prophesied to and the anointing oil was on him he walked right into uh, uh, Samuel amen that's, that's his uh, 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 Samuel was, was uh, uh, the, the blessing that was set up by God to him to meet at a specific place at a specific time that's why I say you got to hear God amen when you're going, you say, stop right now. Go into uh, TJ Maxx. There's some pants on the back rack back there for you. Amen. You got to hear and, and immediately and suddenly obey and go and get the blessing that God has for you. Haste can save your life. 1 Samuel 23, 26, Saul went to one side of the mountain and David, his men on that side of the mountain, and David made haste to get away. When they, they, Saul was trying to kill him. David said, I ain't hanging around here. He made haste. I, we got to get out of here now. Amen. Your life is at stake. Amen. I got to move now. So there are going to be situations where God said, you got to move out now. Don't, don't dally dally. Don't, don't, don't walk around. Make haste because the enemy wants to kill you. Get out of town. Quick. Be a giver. In this season, be a giver. Don't miss your blessing by not giving. Another story, we know the story of uh, David. His men were hungry and uh, Nabal was a rich man, and uh, he wouldn't give him nothing to eat. He said, who in the heck is David? David said, I've been watching over your sheep and stuff for a year. I ain't let bandits come in and touch your stuff. And he said, I ain't giving David nothing. Who is David? He, just, he ain't even no king. He ain't nothing. He ain't giving David nothing. But Abigail heard about it. And Abigail said she made haste. She went and got 200 hundred loaves of bread and two bottles of wine and five sheep really dressed and five measures of parched corn and 100 clusters of raisins and, uh, and 100 cakes of figs and laid them on the asses. And she said to her servants, go before me. Behold, I come after you. And she told not her husband. 
You living with old heathen? You can't afford not to let, listen to God in this hour, amen? He's going to call you blessed after a while anyway. Just give when God tells you to give. You ain't got to tell him nothing. Oh, my husband don't like when I get to the church. The devil is a lie. You're going to miss your blessing. Not only did Nabal get up, hurt when he heard about it, Nabal had a heart attack and died. The one obedience was a catalyst for her to get the whole kingdom. Her one obedience by taking this the food to David and being blessed by David, she went and do that. She went home. Nabal found out he had a stroke, laid in bed for what seven days or something, and then died. Abigail went in the closet, got her best dress out, and got on the donkey and said, "I didn't, I'm going for the king now." Say, I got this fool's money. Now I'm going for the king. <laughs> The fool has died rich and left me all this money. But I got money, but I'm going to the one that's going to be the king of the kingdom. I'm going to get the whole kingdom. Just by one obedience, it opened up a whole door for a whole new realm for her. Your enemies will flee in this year in haste and leave you blessings. This is the year of making haste, God. Your enemy is going to make haste. In 2 Kings 7 says, The Lord has made a host of the Assyrians to hear the noise of chariots and the noise of horses and the noise of great hosts. And they said, One to another, Lo, the king of Israel have hired against us the king of the Hittites and the king of the Egyptians and come upon us. That's just, they made haste. The four lepers sitting at the gate and said, We go in this city, they're going to kill us. If we sit here, we're going to die. If we go into the camp and peradventure, they might keep us alive. And they started walking toward the camp of the Syrians, and God took an amplifier and turned the, turned the amp up, amen, in the spirit realm and made a sound come out, sound like horses and chariots. He put on a soundtrack, amen. <laughs> horses and chariots. <laughs> Hallelujah. They heard that soundtrack of horses and chariots coming, and the Syrians ran. And left all their stuff. Who goes to a battle? This is how God set it up. The Syrians were so confident that they were going to destroy Israel that they came with their best clothes on. They came with jewels, with gold and silver and all kind of raiment and all kind of food and stuff. We're going to have a party after we capture this city. We're just going to have a good time. And they left it all. And the Bible says they came out. 2 Kings 7, 15. And they went from them after the Jordan. So the king said, we got five horses left. Somebody get on the five horses. Let's see if these lepers are telling the truth. Somebody get on the horse and go see. And they went out, and they went all the way to the Jordan, and they couldn't find the Syrians anywhere. And he says, on the way, it was full of garments and vessels, and which the Syrians had cast away in their haste. They were in such a hurry. God, God's going to have your enemies run from you. They're going to be in such a hurry, they're going to leave the blessing behind. Amen. Be the blessing. I'm seeing somebody's going to get a house already furnished. The people are just going to leave it behind. They're going to say, get out, go. We foreclose on it. Here, you can have this house with keys. Houses you didn't build. Believe it. God can do it. The Lord said, oh, the Lord told me to give you this house. I don't even know who you are, but the Lord told me to give you this house. I just built this house, but it ain't for me. It's for somebody else. Got to do it for you. Have faith in God. Get excited because it's about to happen. Amen. You're just about to walk into some stuff. Amen. Even though you got money, that don't mean you got to spend your money. Hear me. When you, get, when you become a millionaire, you don't go out and spend your money. You go to the bank and say, give me some of yours. I'll use yours. I'm going to keep mine and make interest off of it. I'll use yours. Wisdom talks. You will not run from your enemies. You ain't going to run from them. <laughs> You're going to walk. I ain't running from nobody. I'm walking. You shall walk and not be weary. You shall run and not faint. Isaiah 49 verse 16 says, Behold, I have graven thee upon my hand, palm of my hand, and the walls are continually before me. Thy children shall make haste. Thy destroyers that made thee waste shall go forth of thee. Lift up your eyes round about. And behold, all these that gather themselves together and come to thee as I live, says the Lord, you shall, they shall surely... Clothe thee with all, I shall surely clothe thee with all them. I'm going to clothe you with all them. They shall come against you. I'm going to take the clothes off of them and put it on you. I'm going to take their money and give it to you. I'm going to take their stuff and give it to you. I'm going to clothe you with them. As I live, said the Lord. And, all, and as with the ornament 
and bind them on thee as a bride doeth. A bride has to have a dowry. God said, I'm going to have the heathen bring the dowry. You're my bride. The church is his bride. He said, I'm getting ready to marry the bride, and the bride, I got to give you a dowry, amen? You don't can't get married. You got to have your own stuff, amen? You come into the marriage with your, well, they used to have when the girls got married, they had a little box, cedar box, and they had all the little towels and stuff. They would save it up to get married. They don't do it no more. Now they come to grandma's house and get all their stuff. <laughs> Go in there, shop, amen? What you got in the closet, amen? What you got in the refrigerator? What you got? Isaiah 52 verse 12 says, You shall not go out with haste, nor by flight. For the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your reward. God said, I'm going before you in this, in this. I'm getting ready to push you out of the blocks. I'm going to make you go in haste, but I've already gone before you and prepared the way for you. You're going to run. Uh, it's going uh, to be like, uh, uh, what's that show? Uh, shop to your drop or something like that where the, where the lady's getting with the basket and you got two minutes to run through the store <laughs> and load it up. God said, make haste and get your stuff. Make haste. Amen. You go to the aisle. I see him be going, grabbing them big old hams and stuff. I'm going to run right, right to the crab <laughs> place where they got all the crab. <laughs> I'm going to shop to my taste. Amen. I ain't just grabbing stuff. I need stuff that I like. Amen. Gumbo. Go to the fish aisle. Amen. Do it and get out. In the season of being fluid, you got to do what God tells you to do and get out of it. Don't sit there and dilly-dally and tell her. Go release it. Release what God gives you to release somebody and go. Don't sit there and let them ask you all a bunch of questions. The king, 2 Kings verse 9, verse 2 says, he told the prophet, he said, when you come hither, Look out there, Jehu, the son of Jehoshaphat, the son of Nimshi, and go in and make him arise up from among his brethren. Bring him, do it in secret. Tell him, come on, I got a word for you. And carry him to the inner chamber. Don't let everybody hear what, I'm, what you're going to tell him. He said, then take the box of oil, pour it on his head, say, thus saith the Lord, the prophetic has come. I've anointed thee king over Israel. Open up the door, flee. Tarry not. Don't stay there and let them ask you questions. Well, who told you to anoint me? Uh, well, who sent you? No, no, he said, put all on his head and run. Get out of there. Don't even, don't, uh, just let me do the rest of the work. You just do what I tell you to do. You go in there and lay hands on him, and you get out of there. You go in there and pray for him. I'm going to raise him up. You go there and bless him, and, I'm, and just going out the door. Don't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. Go and do it quickly. Jehu, and we're in this prophetic season, we're in this prophetic time in the spirit realm that Jehu is about to deal with Jezebel's spirit in the spirit realm. That the spirit of Jehu is being, he was anointed in this year of 2021. It's like, I, I, I say, you know, like you get on the roller coaster and they say, put the bar on and make sure you strapped in. I'm saying, strap in your boot belt of truth real tight. Hold on, because it's going to accelerate. You know, you go to, when you go up the roller coaster, it's a tick, tick, they say, oh, this ain't nothing until you get to the top. And then they make that little curve. This ain't nothing. <laughs> you can, then they make that dip of the 500 miles an hour. Your head, your, your stomach is in your head, up in your throat. That's what is going to happen in 2021. Jehu said, Jehu, the Bible said, when God anointed Jehu, Jehu went and he smote Joram in the, in the chariot. He smote Ahab. Ahab got smote in the chariot. He went up to Joram and, and, and killed him. And the Bible says, uh, the watchman was on the wall and Jehu was coming. Jehu under anointing. He said, he's driving like a madman. It must be Jehu. He's, dri he's accelerating. He's making haste. And he came to the, to the city of Jezreel. And Jezebel said, oh, Jehu. And he got him put on makeup on and eye shadow. And them big old lashes that they're wearing now. And <laughs> he, got a, he went and put on these big old lashes. Now they can't even see. They looking at you. Can't even see through them lashes. Take them things off. Amen. You ain't impressing nobody. And she up in the window. Yoo-hoo, Jehu, have you come for peace? Peace for what? I ain't got no peace. Anybody up there on my side, throw her down. And the eunuchs threw her down. The ones that she castrated, the men that she put down and castrated and made them eunuchs in her temple, that they were mad. They said, let, let, I, I put a picture up yesterday on Facebook. You ought to see that picture. It's got one of the guys got his foot on her neck as she's falling out the window. <laughs> The eunuch said, yeah, we're going to cast that down. 
Payback is a monster. So the, pro the, the showdown is taking place with the prophets of Baal. Uh, everything is up in, in air this week. Uh, we know that if, if, if certain parties get in, they're going to go back to Baal worship, baby sacrifice, human sacrifice. They're going to change all the law. And this is the showdown. And I'm telling you, stand in faith and keep speaking the word and watch the fire of God fall on this situation. God's going to turn this thing around once and for all. Amen. The faith. God, the nations are being shaken. Nations are being judged because of this perverse spirit. Even in Argentina, they just passed the law now that they can abort babies now. And they were out in the street cheering and carrying on. See, that spirit is all over the earth now. He's trying to, if he can't get in America, he's going to go somewhere. They need blood to remain strong in, this, in, in the demonic realm. But God's going to have his way. Your faith in Jesus will cause those that persecute you to move out of your way in haste. In Daniel chapter 3, verse 24, Nebuchadnezzar had, was a stone. He rose up in haste, and he spake unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men in the furnace in the midst of the fire? And the answer said, O true, O king. See, God has set you and put you in position of persecution. The three Hebrew boys were persecuted and said, We were able, God is able to deliver. But if you don't, O king, know that God, we, we're not going to serve, bow down to you. And they threw him in the fire first. But the king, because of that situation, because they feared the Lord to not deny him, the fear, the supernatural fear of the Lord hit that nation because God brought him out of the fire. And the king, in haste, ran and said, Didn't I? And he answered, and the king made a decree that you will serve the God of Daniel, Meshach, Daniel, and Abednego. You're going to serve him. Amen? Anybody mess with them, they're going to die. Amen? God's going to do this in the hour. And Daniel 6, 19, they, then the king arose early in the morning. He went in haste to the lion's den. See, every time there was an attack on God's man or God's woman, the enemy, uh, uh, the king, those that passed the law, the king made a, he was in haste because Daniel was God's man. And the king had to move quickly. And in the same situation, he said, Daniel, Anybody mess with Daniel, they're going to die. Hasten to perform. God said, my word, I will hasten to perform my word. The word of the Lord is coming strong, and the word of the Lord is coming. Uh, this is some of, the, some of the notes that I took just this week. Just this week. He says, the mentors, your mentors are being removed. There's a lot of pastors, bishops, and people that have been dying. He said, the mentors have been removed, kicked, and you're being kicked out of the nest like an eagle's nest. There are coaches and uh, there, 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 the coaches and the five fold. There are five fold being replaced with the next generation of leaders. Just like on basketball team, every season they'll they'll fire the coach, they'll transfer team members because they want to have a winning team. And God is shifting things around now for the next generation to God. Every generation has to make a commitment to God. Every generation has to learn how to fight. And so in this generation, the ones that have been 60 and 70 and, and, and the people have pushed the, the pastors and apostles to the side and the young ones want to rise up, God said, I'm shutting those churches down. He said, I'm raising up the elderly with the gray head, and I'm going to begin to, they're going to begin to train the next generations for the war. They see, the Joshua, when he crossed over, there was a generation that didn't know war. Joshua, when they crossed over to Jordan, they had to, he had to train them first. He said, prepare them first. Prepare them. Get them ready. Circumcise their heart first before they go into battle. And so, the, the God, in other words, God said, this year is to armor up. Armor up for battle. A young generation has not seen war. They have not seen hand-to-hand -hand combat with these demons. And they're about to learn how to do spiritual warfare. You're about to see them come out of their houses and come out and come back to church, young generations that don't know God. They're going to be on fire for God. God's going to shift this thing and turn it around. Idols are being removed from the lands. The battle cry for babies. God is increasing pregnancy this year. The 18%, 20% increase in pregnancy this year. Because people ain't got nowhere to go. <laughs> There's been a 20% increase. God said, they've aborted a lot of babies. Now I'm bringing them a lot of back. And I'm going to cause them to be lively where the midwives or the, or the uh, 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 Planned Parenthood can't kill them. I'm shut down Planned Parenthood. So now they can't kill these babies. And God's causing them to rise up in a, it's just a generation of testing to make a choice. Every generation has to make a choice to serve God like their fathers. Uh, uh, God, uh, also, he gave me prophetic resistance Prophets and warriors are being raised up. 
that are resisting the status quo, resisting the Senate, resisting the House of Representatives, resisting the judges, resisting the laws of the land, resisting what people are saying. That he's raising up resistance. You know, in World War II and in the wars, they had the, the resistance, the French resistance. You know, they would be underground. They would be citizens that they would get the plans of the enemy and they would t take spies in from other countries and allies and they would get make us a supply line and blow up certain things to stop the enemy. And so God said, I'm bringing resistance fighters into the battle. So uh, uh, <clears throat> you got to uh, make haste to get your blessing, your deliverance. Elijah, get down. The rain is coming. Joseph, go tell my father to get here quickly. Joshua, make haste and get down. Uh, are they broken out? Uh, they broken out and, 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 and partying down there. He said, he said, go down the mountain, Joshua. Then it broke out and the partying down there. You got to make haste. Two, on Emmaus Road, Jesus broke bread with him. And the Bible says, did our not hearts not burn? And the Bible says they made haste to go tell him, hey, he's alive. <laughs> he's here. Mary made haste when they went to the tomb and, and Jesus was there. And they made haste. Come back. Hey, he's gone. He's risen. There's a quickening that is taking place in this year. So get ready to be quickened. Get ready to make haste. Get ready to, to uh, uh, see the, the strongholds, the process of strongholds being pulled down. But you've got to get in position. Stretch yourself. Don't get a cramp when God says give $5,000. Amen. Don't choke up. Oh, $5,000. <laughs> Don't choke up when he said give $20,000. Don't choke up when he said give the $50,000. Don't choke up when he said give this person this. And stop right here. Go back around the block and bless that person. Listen to what God is saying. Somebody has been waiting on us to manifest the, the glory of the Lord. People are in position, and God has positioned them. Uh, uh, I was watching the, the, let me wrap this up. I've got two seconds. The Jesus, uh, uh, the, 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 the uh, chosen last night, uh, and the, uh, uh, the, the uh, episode eight was, uh, was with the woman at the well. And Jesus was telling her and began to tell her about who she is. Jesus said, I got to go to, I gotta, he said, well, we got to go to Jezreel. He said, no, 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 no. Y'all go to Jezreel. I got I to go. I got some appointment over here. I got to go over here. Y'all just go over here. I gotta, and he said that. He said, I, and he was telling her, I said, I, I came just for you. This is your appointment. And he began to tell her all about her. And she, was, and she ran. And that was the beginning of his ministry. He knew the right woman he needed to get to to push the ministry out. And if you read further on about that, well, she went and got the whole city. She went and got the whole, she went and told everybody. The whole city came out and heard Jesus preached. And the Bible says some believed and some didn't. And some said, we'll, we'll ponder on this man. But a revival broke out because of this one woman. There's one person you can come across that can break out a revival in a, in a family, in a church, in a city. One person. So be ready. It ain't... Uh, it's not going to be about me. It's not going to be about the apostles. It's not going to be about the prophets. It's going to be about you saints out there. And God's going to use you. I'm just the coach, one of the coaches. I'm just the seer telling you what God's doing. You're going to do the work of Jesus Christ. Heal the sick. Heal the lame. Heal the deliver the captives. Cast out devils. Watch God do a work in this hour. Bring people into uh, prosperity and blessings. Amen. So we're at the starting blocks. The anointing of Jehu, the anointing, I release the anointing of Jehu and I release the anointing of Elijah, that spirit of haste, the spirit of speed that will begin to manifest in the earth on God's people. God will anoint, hallelujah, the prophets. He's anointing the, the, the evangelists and the teachers. He's anointing the saints in the pews, the citizens uh, to be resistance fighters, to be warriors. He's anointing the children and grandchildren that just the outpouring of his spirit was going to hit this earth. So God said, make haste. That word makes haste. Be fluent. Be, be uh, 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 pliable. Be, uh, be, uh, be ready for suddenly. Be prompt. Be ready. Be in position. When you hear the sound of the wind in the trees, Dan, David, move out. When you hear this, move out. When you see this, move out. When you hear the shout, move out. When you, when, when you blow the trumpet, shout, and the walls will fall out. All of these things were things they were preparing for. God was preparing them and getting them positioned to receive. So receive your blessing. Receive, get in position, make haste. God's changing your pace. You can't dilly-dally. You can't just drag around any longer. 
you got to change, get a vision, get a new purpose, and, and get ready to move out. You're not going to be sitting in the house all year like you did last year. Amen? You got to move out in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a praise. I hope you got something out of that. Praise God. Get excited because it's going to get excited.